Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, gonna be going over a implant case that we did in this video. This is a quad four bridge that failed, um, massive decay on the four four, the four seven abutment was abscessed. So we're basically gonna do an immediate implant surgery, place two implants, um, wait three months, get a scan. Here's the pre-scan, uh, and then there's the scan output. Um, my designer Pargev is gonna design this unit and we're just gonna plug it into the Roland mill it out like so and then uh, center it polish it bond the adapters and then uh, install adjust the bite fill up the screw channels give it a polish so get started with the footage here would have anesthetized with articane long buckle and a block and then we're going to lay a flap here to get access to the buckle bone <clears throat> The 4-7 tooth actually was the reason why this uh, patient initially sought treatment because there was a big abscess there that um, was causing severe pain. So we actually um, took care of that during the spec froze section, the bridge distal, the 4-5 abutment, and then extracted the 4-7 and then made the plan to, uh, to replace the teeth with implants. There were no symptoms, but um, you can see here the... Uh, there's no lesions on either of these teeth. They both have successful root canals. So she said, well, um, I'll do the surgery when I feel like it. So uh, this was this was the day and um, basically just going to remove the root tips and put um, put a couple of uh, 4.8s in, uh, in each of the sockets. So here we are just reflecting um, so we have good clear access. Big thick lingual plate. We're always going to place our immediate implants closer to the lingual aspect of the socket because the buckle side is usually the one that's thinner and um, where threads could be exposed. So basically just going to take our lindemann and punch through the apical cortex of bone and then we'll go in with our um, osteodensic or our versa burrs. We're using them on clockwise motion here and then take them down about 12 millimeters or so and um, and then place our implant. So we're going to work our way up to a 4.5 and then we're also going to do a little bit of tissue or a little bone profiling so that the rim of the uh, bone is um, is flat circumferentially so there aren't any high areas when we go to place the implant. And then here's our 4.5, going to run it nice and slow to finish opening it up here. And usually mandibular bone, I'll take it down a little bit deeper um, because the taper of the um, burr because if the mandibular bone is very dense, then you can kind of sometimes ha end up with too much torque and pretty good insertion torque here. So we're just going to take it down the rest of the way until our polished collar is buried as much as uh, we want it to be. Just enough that we can get our healing cap around the, the wider part. We'll put our healing cap on and then we'll get started on the 4-5. So we'll just take a force up and take out the four five and then do the same thing Lindemann burr into the lingual aspect of the socket and then take our osseoids or our versa burrs uh, opening up the lingual and actually even that four four uh, implant ended up tipping a little bit buckle so i um, going to profile the bone of the four five site there have a nice kind of crater that our tissue level collar can sit in Here's the 4.5, so we're going to irrigate it with uh, full power or saline on full full strength and then put in our, our tissue level there. And yeah, you can see the 4.4 implant is a little bit tipped. This is something that will sometimes be done if the collar gets buried a bit too deep so much that the healing cap will uh, bump into the bone. Is Sometimes I have to go in with a round burr after and, um, and remove bone such that the implant... Um, or the healing cap will seat fully. Otherwise, you'll end up with a healing cap that comes unscrewed. You'll have to get the patient back, freeze them, cut a bunch of tissue away, and the bone, and then put the healing cap back on. And we're actually going to, I think the, maybe the bone was a little bit thin on the buckle side. I think we could see gray, a little bit of gray show through on the buckle aspect of the 4.4. So we're just going to put some Cerasorb M into that site and then cover it up. No membrane required with primary closure like that. I like to leave my, um, my allograft material dry in the, in the carrier because I find if I hydrate it before I put it in the carrier, then it, it clogs and you can't push it out. And, uh, as long as you rinse it with saline thoroughly before, 
um, placing it in the site, it's going to rehydrate with in vitro or uh, blood in vivo. So we'll put a couple sutures in and then send the patient home with some Advil and Tylenol. And then uh, we'll make an appointment three months uh, down the road to get him back. There's the PA of the post, uh, post-surgical phase. Get him back three months later. We'll take the healing caps off, take a scan. Here's that. You can see the 4-4 implant is coming out a little bit buckly oriented, but not too much of an issue that we'll need to do a cement retained solution. Um, the the one six uh, is going to need to be cantilevered a little bit from the backside of the unit that we'll make. So Pargrave is going to take care of that. He's going to design this. You can see the screw channel coming out of the buckle side of the 4-4. There it is installed, and now we'll go over the um, little installation uh, restorative phase so there it again is the post-operative um, x-ray and then here's the scan output from the trios 4 with our intraoral scan flags there's the design roland uh, milling the unit out takes about two hours to mill something like that we'll cut the sprues out and then uh, take the green state unit put it in the um, sintering furnace overnight with some other cases here's the there's the case right there here it is after uh, after an overnight center, um, centered, pre-polished. There it is, polished. We'll bond our little um, tie bases, those little des orum bases that allow for the allow for about twenty degrees of um, screw channel freedom. So we can uh, we can take the screw channel and try to put it a little bit farther in, but it's going to come out the buckle. The patient doesn't really care. You know, we'll try to match the backfill material as close as we can still noticeable but they don't really care as much as dentists do and it's going to be plenty uh, plenty strong that we don't really have to worry about fracture of uh, of the material so sometimes we'll put the unit in finger tightness and then torque it down to about 20 to 25 newton centimeters to check the interproximal contact and the occlusion before taking it down to the 35 uh, newton centimeter spec so we'll do that and then we'll check the bite. There it is fully sat, take an x-ray at that point to make sure that it's fully sat. Check the bite, see some high spots, take it down, do that one more time. Take down the high spots until it's comfortable using a fine diamond and then a polishing wheel to polish the material. And then we're ready to backfill the screw channels. So put in some Teflon tape, leaving about three to five millimeters of space for our um, our flowable composite so that those don't fall out do the same thing for the four or five give it a good dry no no need to bond or etch or anything it's just going to stay in with mechanical retention and then we'll get the patient back in anywhere from two to eight weeks of service to uh remove the um um to retorque the the fixation screws and then i usually Restored definitively with Equia Forte. And that's that one. There's the final macro there. You can see the tissue level collar, no clinical significance there. If it was an upper anterior, it would be, but 